If I could figure out a way to get my legs to move in the way that I need them to, I'm dying, I know I am. I have to get to the hospital right now. I started to realize that there was something really, really wrong. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was so shaky, I was so weak, and I realized that I couldn't feel my feet. Amy Purdy. When I was 19 years old, I faced the biggest trauma of my life. I was standing on the floor when I suddenly realized that I couldn't feel my feet. My heart was racing so fast that I couldn't even breathe. When I looked at my feet, they were turning purple. All of a sudden, I found myself at the hospital. The doctors told me that some kind of virus attacked me and I only had a 2% chance of living. I was relying on the machines and mechanics. I felt like I was living in hell and my life was worse. I lost my spleen. My kidneys were not working and I lost my legs under my knees. Then the doctors told me that I was gonna have hardware legs. At that moment, my eyes were full of tears and I went into a deep phase of depression until I stood up after a long time. At that moment in my life, I was mentally and physically broken, but somehow I had to move on. I had to keep going. So I started to think positively and I started to see things from a different perspective. I thought that even though these legs are fake, but because of these, I could be six feet tall or any height I wanted, depending on the boy I was dating. I started to laugh again. I thought that what if I was the author of my story? Then I allowed myself to experience all the adventure of life and the passion I felt at that moment was all I needed all this time to start a new chapter of my life. So live beyond limits, set yourself free and have faith in yourself. If you wanna see more videos like this, smash the like button. glanced to the floor, I saw that my feet were purple. And when I glanced at my hands, I saw that my hands were purple. And when I looked at my reflection in the mirror, I saw that my nose, my chin, and my cheeks were purple as well. I was dying. And I knew it. I immediately began to panic. My heart was beating out of my chest. I was seeing tunnel vision. I was sicker than I could ever explain as I lay in a coma. But the doctors diagnosed me with something called meningococcal meningitis which is a vaccine preventable blood infection. I was given less than a 2% chance of living and immediately put on life support. We have no idea how I got it, so for all I know, somebody could have sneezed on me when I was in the elevator at work, and maybe that's how I got it. But due to this little microscopic bacteria, over the course of two and a half months, I ended up losing my spleen, I lost my kidney function, I lost the hearing in my left ear, and due to the septic shock that my body went into, I ended up losing both of my legs below the knees. My life changed like that. I went from being a normal 19-year-old without a care in the world to now relying on machines, mechanics, and medical innovation in order to live and in order to even survive. And I thought the worst was over. That is, until I saw my new legs for the very first time. They were these bulky blocks of metal with pipes bolted together for the ankles. I don't know who designed these feet, you know, they try to make them look real, but they look like they were straight out of the plumbing department of Home Depot. They were hideous, and with my mom by my side and just tears streaming down our faces, I strapped on these chunky legs and I stood up. I was absolutely physically and emotionally broken. The thought of living the rest of my life with these hunks of hardware as my legs was depressing and overwhelming. And little did I know at that time that my biggest loss, my legs, would eventually become my biggest asset. But I think as soon as I got so sick and tired of being sick and tired, I knew that in order to move forward with my life, I had to somehow learn how to let go of the old Amy and somehow learn to embrace the new Amy. And that is when it dawned on me that the old Amy, I don't know, was maybe five foot five, but the new Amy, she could be six foot tall. I could be as tall as I wanted, or I could be as short as I wanted, depending on who I was dating at the time. It was times like these that first prompted me to ask myself if my life were a book, and I was the author of that book how would I want this story to go? I saw myself walking gracefully, and I saw myself somehow helping other people through my journey, and I saw myself snowboarding again. 
And I didn't just see myself carving down this mountain of powder, I visualized it so strongly that I could actually feel it. I could feel the wind against my face and the beat of my racing heart as if it was happening in that very moment. And that passion and that fire that I felt inside, that is when a new chapter of my life began. I was back up on a snowboard four months after losing my legs, although things didn't go quite as expected. And I hit this bump completely out of control and I fell and my goggles went one way and my beanie went the other way and my legs still attached to my snowboard went flying down the mountain. And meanwhile, I was still sitting up on top of the mountain. 